Hi there. In this video, I'm going to take a look at what is a shapefile, both in terms of the broad definition and also in more detail about what makes up a shapefile. So let's start off with the basics. So shapefiles are essentially a GIS vector file format that allows us to store data as polygons, lines, and points. So we actually have three types of shapefile, point, line, and polygon. So each shapefile has to have that geometry type defined and can only contain one type of geometry. So if we need point, line, and polygon features, we need at least three separate shapefiles to store that data. So shapefiles not only store the geometry of the features, they also store the attribute data. So if I open the attribute table for one of these, Shapefiles, we can see here a number of different attribute fields, and essentially we can have as many different attribute fields as we want associated with each shapefile. So that's the kind of broad definition of what a shapefile is, but what's probably more interesting to look at is actually how is a shapefile structured. So this folder here contains one shapefile, and anyone who's done any kind of work with shapefiles will soon notice that as soon as you create a shapefile, it's not just one file that appears in your folder. There's a number of different files that actually make up that shapefile. So let's just have a little look at those. So we've got six different files here, all with slightly different extensions, and some of these are more important than others. So some of the most critical ones are the SHP, and SHX files. So the SHP is essentially the kind of master file for your shapefile. This is what any software that uses shapefiles, so GIS software like ArcMap or QGIS, will be looking for when you add it. And it tells the software essentially what all the, the information about the shapefile is. Um, the SHX also contains geometry for the shapefile but in a machine readable format. So this is actually what your GIS software will mostly be looking at to rapidly load the geometry for your shapefile. But obviously there's more to your shapefile than just geometry. Um, and the attribute data is actually contained separately within the DBF file. And DBFs are quite useful um, because although they form part of the shapefile, they're actually a file that's readable in its own right by software like Excel or many other um, spreadsheet and data analysis software types. So actually the DBF file um, allows us to open all the attribute information and carry out separate analysis. So we could now look at this data in Excel, plot graphs and charts, carry out statistical analysis, uh, all kinds of things that aren't as easily doable within GIS software itself. So the DBF file um, contains all of our attribute information. Probably the next most important part of our shapefile is the PRJ. Um, so PRJ is essentially an abbreviation for projection and we can actually open this in a text editor and see that what this contains is essentially the projection information for our shapefile. So what coordinate system we're in, spheroid, um, all of the information that a GIS program needs to accurately project and represent our data. And that leaves us with two other files, the CPG and the XML. So the CPG file is another very simple one, and this literally contains basic information about the text encoding of our file. Um, in this case, we're in UTF-8 encoding. And actually, this only really matters if we've got a shapefile that's in different encoding from our standard system format. I could actually delete that CPG file um, and that shapefile would add into QGIS just fine. Um, it wouldn't cause, cause any immediate problems. And the final component I have here is the XML file. So if we open the XML file, uh, we can see that what this actually contains is essentially a series of metadata about this particular shape file, how it was created, where it's been edited, um, and a lot of information 
along those those lines. So essentially, this XML is a kind of metadata file, um, allowing us to trace back what's been done to to this particular shape file. So we actually don't need all of these parts. Um, in theory, we could add a shape file into QGIS or ArcMap um, with just the SHP and SHX components. But if we did that, it would have no projection information um, and also no attributes associated with it. So the PRJ and DBF are pretty essential in making sure that our data is projected correctly um, and also has all of the attribute information associated with it. The CPG and XML, are in most cases, optional files. We could lose those, and actually it wouldn't have any real impact on the operation of our, of our shapefile. So just to demonstrate this, I'm going to add in this particular shapefile. And zoom to layer. So this is our shapefile as is. We have all of the attribute data associated with it. Now, what I'm going to do is actually remove all of these layers and start deleting parts of the, the shapefile one by one just to show you the impact it has. So first of all, I'm going to delete that CPG and XML files just to demonstrate the fact that in most cases, you can get on fine without those, still adds in no error messages, all of the attribute data is there. So let's remove it again. And this time I'm going to delete the projection file. So if I add this in now, we can see it's not appearing on my screen. And I'm getting an error message saying that the CRS was undefined. So it's defaulting to WGS84. If I zoom to the layer now, we'll see that it has added into the map. Um, but it's not going to be correctly located. Um, it still has all of the geometry, still has all of the attributes. So let's remove it again and go one step further and delete the DBF file. So if I add it now, we get the same error about the coordinate reference system. Um, it doesn't actually kick up an error immediately about attributes, but if I open the attribute table, we can see now that that attribute data is missing. And then finally, if I try to delete the SHX file, um, I'm going to leave the SHP file because if we take that away, then it won't recognize that we have a shape file at all. And at this point, you can see that we do kick up an error um, and it won't add the layer into the map. But it's really only actually that the SHP and SHX that it needs to just visualize the geometry but as i said the projection and um, dbf attribute files are pretty essential if we want to actually have a, a usable shape file but anything else we see on top of those while it will contain useful information are actually generally non-essential to the, the correct operation of the shape file itself so hopefully that's given you a clear review of what a shape file is and exactly how it's made up thanks a lot